Calling all detectives. A man is murdered. And the only clue to his death is a hand of stud poker. That is the situation on this page for my casebook. The casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. The private detective, like me, Jerry Browning, knows that no matter how lucky a killer seems, murder is always a losing gamble. The club coat cat is the kind of joint that attracts high society and low characters. It offers blackjack, roulette, chuck a luck and every other standard device for losing your money. The reason I was in the place was because I was being paid to be there. Ace Hogan owned the coquette. Marty Wilson ran a rival joint out on River Road. Tonight, Ace and Marty were going to bury the hatchet. And my job was to make sure they didn't bury it in each other's heads. The people around the roulette wheel were betting $10 chips like nickels. Right up against the table was young Wade Julian. Hello, Jerry. How are you doing? I'm not betting, Julie. Just watching. Lucky you. These six chips are the last of 1,500. Well, here goes nothing. Hmm. Did I say nothing? I was so right. Excuse me, Jerry. Got to see Ace arrange for a little credit. I watched him go. So, Wade Julian, four gold polo player, had gambling debts. Too bad. I walked over to one of the 26 girls, picked up the dice cup, and bet a dollar on fives. I threw one five four times in a row, and two fives for the next six rolls. Not so good. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder. Ace Hogan, the boss. You picked the wrong number, Jerry. You should have took aces like me. Hey, wait a minute. These aren't house dice. This dame is cheating you. He glared at the girl. Sister, I don't stand for cheating. Scram out of here and take your crooked ivories, which Ace turned on his heel and walked upstairs. A couple of minutes later, Marty Wilson, the rival joint owner, came in, nodded to me, and went upstairs. By then, the dice girl had taken her hat and coat and disappeared. I waited around for Ace and Marty to call me. I waited almost an hour. Then... Ace was upstairs in his office, alone, and very dead. Called in as arbitrator between two rival gamblers, and discovered that Ace Hogan, one of the gamblers, had been murdered. <laughs> Lieutenant Dawson of Homicide stared suspiciously at me. Jerry, is this all there was on his desk, just his playing cards? I nodded. Ace's body lay slumped over the desk as though he'd made a last desperate attempt to get help, or his killer. In front of him was a deck of cards and a hand of stud poker. The exposed cards were the two, three, four, and six of diamonds. I picked up the fifth card, which was face down. It was the ace of spades. Dawson had a theory about that. Ace was playing two-handed poker with somebody. They got into a fight, Ace had the losing hand, and lost his life, too. I shrugged. Maybe. Ace was pretty busy tonight. He had a meeting scheduled with Marty Wilson, a run-in with a crooked dice girl, and even Wade Julian, the polo player, wanted to see him. When would he have time to play poker? Dawson didn't know. He was too busy taking down the names I mentioned and ordering the arrest of their owners. But I kept thinking of that poker hand. I went on home after a while and fell asleep dreaming of a straight flush in diamonds ruined by the ace of spades in the hole. I sat up suddenly in bed, said out loud, the five of diamonds is missing, whatever that means. Out of the darkness, a voice answered me. Don't mean a thing, Jerry. Not a thing. I blinked as light suddenly flooded the room. After a few seconds, I made out Marty Wilson sitting in a chair and dangling a revolver on one finger. Honest to goodness, Jerry, I like you, but I'm awful nervous. Don't do anything to make this gun go off. I feel sorry for nervous people, so I sat real still. Dawson has a warrant for you, Marty. Yeah, that's why I'm nervous. Guy like me, a gambler, has no chance. They got me convicted in advance. Sure, right, talk to Ace, but we got along fine. He was a square guy. We fixed up the major, and I drove back to my own joint. And a fair chance I got of anybody believing me. Look, Marty, I believe you. And the only chance you've got is to give yourself up. You're crazy. 
Okay, make yourself hard to find and see what happens when they do find you, Marty. He rubbed his chin thoughtfully. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, get dressed and make it snappy. I am your prisoner. Dawson was at headquarters by the time we got there, and he wasn't happy about getting out of bed either. So, decided to give yourself up, Wilson. Sergeant booked this man along with the other two. Give him a break, Dawson. He gave himself up voluntarily. And what about the other two you've got locked up? They can't all be guilty. At two in the morning, everybody's guilty. I'm going back to bed. The next day, I got permission to talk to the other prisoners. The 26 girl was sitting alone in a lockup cell. She was still wearing the hat and coat I'd seen her in when she left the club coquette. Her eyes were red and swollen from crying. She kept insisting that she hadn't meant to cheat me at dice, and anyway, she didn't keep the money for herself, and besides, she wouldn't kill a nice guy like Ace Hogan. I listened for a while and promised to do what I could. In another cell, Wade Julian, the polo player, was a little more self-possessed. Jerry, I don't know a thing about Ace's murder. Sure, I owed him a lot of money, but I owed him money before and paid it. I talked to him and he offered me credit, just as he did before. I didn't have to kill him. I'll check into it, Julie. My last interview was with Marty, the gambler. I found him sitting on his cot, a deck of cards spread out before him. What are you doing, Marty? Playing solitaire? Yeah. A guy has to pass the time, doesn't he? Sure, Marty. Uh, did you play poker with Ace when you saw him? Marty stared at me. We talk business. Why should we play poker? There were cards spread out on his desk. A poker hand, just like you got spread out. Marty grinned. This ain't poker. It's blackjack. Every gambler plays it by himself to see can he beat himself. Blackjack? Of course it had to be that. Marty, in blackjack, the ace counts for one or eleven. Add to that the two, three, four, and six, and you have sixteen or twenty-six white. Twenty-six. In his dying moments, Ace named his killer the Twenty-Six Girl, who killed him because he found out she was a thief. That cracked it. I got the Twenty-Six Girl upstairs, showed, showed her the card layout. After a while, she lost her nerve and confessed. Ace had tried to make her give back the money she'd stolen with a crooked dice, so she shot him. Just a nice girl. Like I said, every killer thinks he's smarter than other people. But nobody can get away with murder. It isn't in the cards. Listen next time to Calling All Detectives. Mystery drama, mystery quiz, and a chance for you to match wits with yours truly, Jerry Browning, Private Detective.